Good morning everyone and welcome to another baking video. We've been our whole life knitting, proofing and baking bread on the same day. But since this new era of sourdough bakeries and even home bakeries, which I am one, two, there's this idea of proofing, retarding the fermentation, making cold fermentation maybe for hours or even days. And I know that that's good. It makes the bread more tasty, more interesting, but does it apply to all kind of bread? But I'll be doing a whole grain experiment. We'll be working with 100% whole grain flour. So you may know or not, when you work with whole wheat flours, they ferment really faster, faster than a regular one like a white flour. So I will make one dough, then divide it and make two equal loaves. The first one I will proof it and bake it on the same day, and then the other one I will retard its fermentation till the next day and then bake it. And then at the end of the video we're going to compare them and see how they turn out. So let's do this and may the gluten be with us. If we talk about whole wheat flour, here I have some wheat grains that I brought from Patagonia and I'm going to grind them in my Austrian mill. Nothing like doing things at home. What we need to do is to refresh our whole grain sourdough starter. In this refreshment, we'll be looking for an 80% hydration. However, the most important part of this process is to do it by the eye, always looking for that creamy texture, like the one you're seeing right now. To achieve good results while baking, it is very important to have an active sourdough starter. And look how happy it grows overnight. And here we have it back, and I want you to see how creamy and airy it looks. This is how the sourdough starter should look like before we get to work. Now, let's go with the dough. In a bowl, we'll place a whole wheat flour, spelt flour, ripe flour, the active sourdough starter, and water. We start to mix everything. But pay attention, here we are not going to knead. We simply have to moisten the flour mix. And as you can see, there is no gluten development yet. Now we cover it and leave it here on the counter. An hour later, we wet our hands and you'll see the magic of the gluten in front of your eyes. Or instead, in your hands. Here you're seeing the dough completely kneaded. Now we have to add the last ingredient, which is the salt. With a few droplets of water, we're going to dissolve it and begin to integrate it into the dough. It's time to let it rest at room temperature for around an hour. Now it's time to stretch and fold the dough. This way, we will allow the gluten network to develop even further. Then we let the dough rest again for half an hour, and then here we go again. What we do the stretching and folding is to give tension to the dough. And that is essential so that the bread then has a good structure. Now it's time to leave the dough alone and wait for it till it doubles in size. A few hours later, we'll get this. Wow! And now, with a little flour on the counter, we start to slowly unmold the dough. It really made a very good fermentation. It's time to divide the dough in half. We're going to shape the first batter, the one that will ferment at room temperature. We fold the dough from one side to the other and roll it really slowly without the gas in it. Closing the ends and we dust it with a little bit of flour. We do the same with the banneton and now we put the bread in there. It's ready. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. It is time to shape the second loaf, the one that is going to code ferment. Dust it with flour and put it in the banneton. And here we have the two opponents, the one that will remain on the counter at room temperature and the one that will go to the fridge to ferment overnight. And there it goes, bye bye! It's time to preheat the Dutch oven. We're going to do it at 480 degrees Fahrenheit for around 45 minutes. And here it is, time to bake. Let's begin with the first one, the one that fermented at room temperature a little flour, and we're ready to unmold. Today, I'll be using this lamp to make a lengthwise core, always being careful not to get stuck. Time to put on the lid and bake it for 20 minutes. Time to open. I love that ear. 
Let's take it back to the oven for 20 minutes more. And here with you, the 100% whole wheat bread baked in six hours. Look how light it is. I cannot believe it. In addition, it has a perfect volume and it has an amazing size. Now it's time to the fridge and pick up the other loaf. And what is this? Are you seeing what I am seeing? And I think that at second sight as well, the loaf seems to be slightly overproof. Since this is an experiment, we have to continue. So bring that Dutch oven. Little flour. And molding, scoring. Time to cover it. And to the oven it goes for 20 minutes. And may the gluten be with it. Here it is. I don't want to open but it. And well, I thought it was going to be worse. Let's take it back to the oven. The year is not the best year I've ever seen in my life, but it's okay. Here, having both of them, we can easily realize which one is the winner. On one hand, we have the loaf that fermented for about six hours at room temperature. And on the other side, we have the loaf that cold fermented for around 24 hours. What I liked is that both loaves feel very light. That is the crucial thing. <laughs> the other is more an aesthetic issue. But let's cut them and see what they look like inside. And the truth is that the crumb looks airy, uniform, with beautiful bubbles and a very good volume. And we'll save it for the end of the video. Now it's time to cut the cold fermented bread. And it doesn't look so bad. Although it looks a little bit flat, it has very nice bubbles. The crumb is even and feels super lightweight. Let's also cut a slice. And here you can see both in detail. The one we did at room temperature and the one that spent 24 hours in the fridge. The crumbs really don't feel that different. What is noticeable is the size of the slice. The bread we fermented at room temperature has more volume. And the other, the cold one, was a little flatter and kind of stretched sideways. It is time to try them. Let's go with the first one. What a delicious whole wheat bread. Let's try the other one. Mmm, <laughs> it's very good too. The difference in taste is very subtle, perhaps a little more acidic as a result of being 24 hours in the cold. Both loaves are really good. But what we have to keep in mind and that we have shown in this video is that whole grain doughs ferment much faster than white doughs. So the next time we make bread, let's keep this issue in mind to see whether or not we cold ferment them. Thank you for watching this video and may the gluten be with you. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you. 